Tom, first of all, just just tell us about the maybe the the change over the last few games where results have started to reflect some of the performances as opposed to you know a little bit ago when you were playing well but you weren't picking up as many points as you wanted yeah I think it was important when we was obviously the performances were good but we weren't getting the results that we stuck with doing what we were doing I think it's it was a frustrating time when you come away from games and think what did we do wrong there and there wasn't much that we was doing wrong so it was about sticking with the the process, um, and if we, we knew if we stuck with that, that the outcome would eventually turn in our favour, and um, they did. I think it was it was very unlucky not to come away with the win last weekend, but um, we've we've gone through what what we could have done better, and um, it's it's onto this weekend now. It's been a tough slog since the start of the, the calendar year. Um, has it maybe taught you as a group, you know, after the, a really good start? just maybe the harsh realities of this division that you can play well but ultimately you get punished for maybe one mistake yeah I think that's uh, a big difference in maybe the difference between League 2 and League 1 a lot of people have, have spoken asked me about it and I think that is a, a big thing that you can you can come away from games and scratching your head thinking how have we how have we not nicked that or won that comfortably sometimes um, but there's some high quality players in this league and some big teams that if you give them one or two chances they'll put them both away so um, yeah we've learnt that, that we need to be ruthless in, in front of goal even more so than we wanted to be last season um, and hopefully we've 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 spoke about it and we, we want to be ruthless ourselves we, wanna, we don't just want to win 1-0 we want to win 2-3 and, and be comfortable in games and, uh, and that, that's what we want to do just tell us a bit about the the dynamic of that midfield at the minute, because you and you and Funzo, and then it's been either Ben or Tom who's mm -hmm. who's kind of sat in there. So, uh, do you at the moment do you feel you're all kind of dovetailing quite well in the roles and the, the responsibilities that you've got? Yeah, I think we've all got all quite experienced. Uh, we've got a, a number of games under our belts, and we understand um, what each each player's strengths are, um, regard of, of who who's in the midfield. Even when my, I wasn't in the midfield and them three guys was it was everyone understands their strengths and weaknesses and like you said I think we've we've uh, we've done really well with it recently um, I think Fonzo he's, he's been able maybe to get forward a little bit more knowing that I, I can sit back and and clean up for him and and TC as well he, he's getting on the ball and creating things which we know he can do um, so yeah it's been a joy to, to watch them two in front of me um, and like you said Fonz when he plays a side of me or whoever plays more advanced, we um, it, it changes during game and we make sure that um, we're all quite adaptable to that. So it's uh, yeah, it's been enjoyable. I know, I know you've done this over a lot of your career, but sometimes when you're in games like that, do you have to kind of accept that it's your job to do some of the dirty work and you've got to be the guy who's going to sit in there and mop up and these guys have got a bit more freedom? Is that yeah. Do you, yeah. how do you rationalise that? In your yeah, head? and they take all the plaudits yeah. when we win. No, it's um, I think that's I think. As my career's gone on, I've probably that used to be me, maybe put, getting the assist or scoring a goal. And as I've gradually come further back, and it's it, look, it's about the team as much as your individual accolades and performances. It's all about the team, and um, I'll take not being in uh, the star man in the newspaper at the weekends to to win uh, to win a game. So like I said, it's an it's an enjoyable one to to watch them guys flourish and and, and make goals. And like I said, it's about me cleaning up and, and doing the hard yards behind them. So I'm happy enough doing that. A lot of players play that role differently. You know, some snap into tackles, some try and just cover ground. So in your approach to it, what's maybe the most challenging thing about playing that role? Um, trying to read, uh, just read the game before before others do. I think that's probably one of my um, strengths in that position, that I can probably read the game really well. And it's about, there's a lot of second balls uh, in this league that you have to, to jump on and yes you've got to be strong and you've got to be combative that you you make the tackle you make the header but if you can get there maybe that half yard earlier than the opposition you can maybe bring it down and I think the easy option sometimes is to uh, bring it down and maybe put it in behind or just clear it and I think of um, like I said the strength of mine is obviously to read it and and to try and make that first pass, I think when we make that first pass, it, it makes, a, um, makes a hell of a difference to, to us and we can actually possess the ball rather than, than chase after it and, and uh, be defending again. So yeah, just just reading the game and, and being able to make that first pass and, and have some calmness on, on the ball. I know you're not going to answer this one straight away, but you and a lot of others are out of contract at the end of the year. So when you get to this stage of the season, is there kind of a feeling that 
you know, individually, you, you're not playing for your future, but you, you are aware of that in the back of your mind, and you think, well, the more consistent I am and the better I play, I've got a better chance of, of getting something at the end of the year. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer, but I also think that's every game. I think regardless if you've got however many years or months left on your deal, you, you go into every game thinking, I want the shirt for next week, and if you can do that continuously, I think you're... Yeah, you're putting yourself in a in a good position. I think if you start thinking, oh geez, I've only got this many months on the deal, I need to perform. Start putting extra pressure on yourself that maybe you don't need to do. Um, the, the gaffer knows us inside out and knows what we bring to this club. Um, and for me, it's about uh, putting in good performances week in week out. And if you start looking too far ahead, you can take your eye off the ball. So um, as as much as I want to be here next season, it's about next this weekend. Um, I perform this weekend, hopefully well, and, and you get into next weekend's team. From what you just said, that obviously you do, you would like to be here next year. Oh yeah, know, of course, them, of yeah. course. I mean, <laughs> there's not not going to be many players in this team, uh, and the way this club's run, the way, the way this club's going, that, that wouldn't want to be here next season. Thank you. Tom, obviously, do you like playing within a two or a three? Because obviously, if you're in with a two, it puts more, I suppose, more work on you, doesn't? It? If you're in with a two, is it better with a three in terms of because you've got that option, you can see where the other players are going obviously for you and Tom. Is, yeah. is that easier? Um yes, yes and no. I think you you look last weekend, um we was we was gonna start in a two and then we changed it during the game to then a one and a two and I think different points in the game maybe call for different um systems but I think a lot can be read into systems. I I, I haven't got a a uh, system where I, was, I think right, I'm better in that system or I'm better in this system. I think in a two, yes, you there's differences to a three. You maybe um, you're more man for man than you maybe would if you're a deep liar. Because sometimes you can get more more time on the ball, um, but then sometimes as a two, you can get forward a little bit more. It's it's different. I remember Forest Forest Green away, we was playing in a two, and I managed to get myself in the box and. Uh, got a nosebleed for getting too high, maybe, but um, look, it's it's uh, each game's different, and I'm sure whatever system we go in with this weekend, we'll, we'll end up playing a couple of different uh, systems during the game. So it's about us being able to adapt. And you want to finish in the high, and obviously you're going into the final ten games of the season, home game of course against Burton, who are at the wrong end of the table. But mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact they've had some heavy results, they'll come here looking to get some points, won't they? Yeah, they definitely will. I know their manager well. Um, he was my assistant manager at Stevenage, so I, I, I know what a Dino Mamria team looks like. Um, and they're not going to come here and, and roll over. They're going to come here for a battle, and um, I'll make sure we're ready for that. Um, as a team, as a group, we'll, we'll we'll know obviously a lot about them. We've done our analysis work. Um, we'll do some more today, and it'll, uh, it'll be a, a tough game. It's not going to be an easy game.